What's going on everybody out there or watching this? Thank you for watching if you are. This is my Raw Philadelphia review. Tonight Raw was in Philly. Great wrestling fan base. There's some hardcore passionate fans in Philly. Everybody knows that because ECW was the their home was Philadelphia for a lot of years. Great hardcore wrestling fans there. I should probably uh, turn off my Twitter right in front of me because I don't want to start reading all these tweets. It's distracting. So there it goes. It's off on my screen. <clears throat> Anyways, I said last night Boston for TLC has some great fans in Boston. Great, tremendous wrestling fans. The same goes for Philly, there are great, passionate, hardcore WWE fans in Philly. I know that for a fact. And a lot of them were probably at Raw Philly. So it kicked off. Raw Philly kicked off with Stephanie McMahon. Her music hits part of the authority. She comes out, talks about her husband, Triple H, how... She was pissed and angry at Roman Reigns for attacking her husband at TLC. She goes on and on talking about her husband and her kids had to see Triple H spitting up blood at home and all that. Well, we all know Triple H is probably in London right now. Or went back to the UK on the private jet. Probably he's back in the UK right now this very minute. Because NXT TakeOver London is very soon. It's like less than two days away. Or about two nights away. Probably sooner because when NXT gets on the air, NXT TakeOver London will probably be 2 o'clock in the afternoon where I am. Where I'll be watching. It'll be 2 o'clock, 2 p.m. So it's sooner than 48 hours, really, if you think about it. So Stephanie cuts a promo trying to get sympathy for herself and what happened to her husband, Triple H, being attacked viciously by Roman Reigns at TLC. Roman did that to Triple H. Triple H deserved everything he got from Roman because Roman snapped and it was time for Triple H to get a beat down. In my opinion. So Triple H got everything he deserved. He deserved a giant beatdown by Roman. So then Stephanie calls out Roman Reigns. And a lot of people probably thought she was going to fire Roman. I didn't think that. But whatever. She gets in the ring and says to Roman. That I'm not going to fire you. Because my husband told me not to. But... She says, my father, Mr. McMahon, or my father's coming to the arena. He's coming here tonight, and he may fire you. And then Stephanie, before she said that, she slapped Roman like five or six times in the face, in the head. She laid a beat down. Stephanie laid the smack down on Roman Reigns' face in his head. She slapped him, hit him around a couple times, beat him up pretty good. I wouldn't want to piss off Stephanie because she she could probably fight. Who knows? Anyways. So, then Stephanie says, my father's on his way to the arena and maybe he'll come here and he'll fire you. I'll leave that to him. So then, we all know, we all heard Vince McMahon is going to show up on Raw. Pretty damn surprising, but then again, with the ratings as low as they have been, the past month, or longer than a month, with the ratings being some of the lowest ratings in the history of Raw for over 15 years. The ratings haven't been this low in 15 years since 1997. So Vince thinks by putting himself on TV, by putting himself on Monday Night Raw, Vince, I'm sure, thinks because of his ego... And, of course, if you were Vince McMahon, you would have an ego also. And if you say you want, you would be lying to yourself. Anyways, so Vince thinks, I'll put myself on Raw and it will boost and bump the ratings up. Well, it probably did. 
because a lot of people were probably interested to watch to see if Vince was going to fire Roman. That happened after hour one, I believe. So I'll talk about that in a little bit. So after that segment where Stephanie says, my father's coming to the arena and you may be fired, Roman. Or maybe he'll fire you, whatever she said. Something like that. First match was Dean Ambrose against Dolph Ziggler. It was not for the Intercontinental title. It was just a singles match for no championship. It was a pretty good match. It was a good first match to kick off Raw. It was very good. wasn't great, but it was very good. I enjoyed it. Dean Ambrose, I think, won. I can't even remember, but I think he won. Or, no, I think it was a DQ because Kevin Owens, I forgot, Kevin Owens comes out during the match, I believe. I think Dolph was down or out of the ring or something. And then Kevin Owens gets in the ring. He looks angry, looks pissed off because he lost the Intercontinental title. So then Owens gets in, throws Ambrose into the rope, pop-up power bombs Dean Ambrose. And then he picks him up again, does a second pop up power bomb to Dean Ambrose. That was pretty awesome. That was cool to see. That was entertaining. And then I think even I might have attacked Dolph Ziggler. I'm not sure. Anyways, Kevin Owens grabs the Intercontinental title, brings it in the ring, showing it to Dean Ambrose like he wants his rematch. He really wants his Intercontinental title back because he lost it at TLC. So it was great for WWE to do that with Kevin Owens, have him come out and give and deliver two pop-up power bombs to Dolph, not to Dolph, to Dean Ambrose. Two pop-up power bombs to Dean Ambrose. That was cool to see, and I enjoyed that. Even though I'm a fan of Ambrose, it was still cool. Um, next after that was um, what was it? believe it was Bo Dallas was up next against R-Truth and people were actually singing along I don't know why some fans in Philly would actually sing along to the What's Up song because it is so played out so lame so stupid it's just old as hell and it's pretty god awful R-Truth Came up with a good theme song, good entrance music, but it's played out. Yelling, what's up? And then the crowd says, what's up? He says, what's up? We all know what happens after that. It's played out. I'm sick of it. Nobody cares about Bo Dallas or our truth I mean, some might, but I don't. I mean, this, I tweeted on Twitter, this was a super... Stars match and if you don't know WWE Superstars is exclusively on the network on Friday nights and it's pretty awful they usually only have two matches every Superstars and every single week I'm not joking every single week Superstars has Heath Slater on it Fandango on it um, Jack Swagger on it a lot of times, even, who else, Adam Rose is always on Superstars, Fandango, always on Superstars, Slater, always on Superstars, even Neville, sometimes is always on Superstars, and then Zack Ryder is on it a lot, or has been a lot in the past, and Bo Dallas has even been on Superstars also in the past, R-Truth also a couple times, so my point is, Bo Dallas versus R-Truth is not, not a match that us fans need to see on Raw. It's not worthy, in my opinion, it is not worthy of being on Raw. It's a superstars match, or put it on SmackDown. Nobody wants to see it on Monday Night Raw on live TV. So then after that, Bo Dallas, R-Truth probably have their match for three minutes two and a half minutes and then Vince gets out of his limo and sh actually shows up early. Stephanie greets him and says let's go to the ring now and then Vince says no no you go back to Connecticut and you take care of your husband and then Vince tells his daughter Stephanie says I'll deal with this 
Stephanie gets in a limo and goes home, I guess. Even though I'm sure she didn't go home. I'm sure she stayed backstage the entire time. So then Vince starts walking to the ring. And then they go back to Bo Dallas, R-Truth. And R-Truth looks up at the screen like, oh shit, Vince is here. He's probably going to stop our match. And he did. Thank God he did. So then Vince, his music hits. No chance in hell theme hits. Vince comes out, gets a damn good pop. You could say a lot of crap about Vince. You could put the guy down. You could make old jokes and whatever. But the guy still gets a great pop, great reaction. And these are hardcore fans from Philadelphia. And they gave Vince a pretty damn good pop when he came out. Vince gets on the mic, g grabs a chair, and I think sits down at ringside says, Roman, get your ass out here. And no other talent is even allowed to say the word ass, which is fucking ridiculous. You're just holding back your talent, and you're handcuffing your talent because you aren't allowing them to speak like human beings, like grown adults. Grown adults say ass when they're pissed off or angry. So... Vince calls out Roman, he does not come out, he does not come out, they go to a commercial, they come back, Vince is still in the ring and says, come on, get your ass out here again, and then Roman comes out, faces Vince, Roman gets on the mic, and, and or Vince says, plays with the crowd a little bit, plays with their emotions, and Vince says, would you like to see a WWE World Heavyweight Championship match right here tonight, and they're crowd pops of course they're gonna pop for that and then vince says you always fool for, fall for that you you freaking dummies or whatever he said he said you always fall for that every freaking time and that was pretty funny and then roman finally and then vince says you're not getting any title shot tonight and sheamus already came out he's up on the stage so then roman tries to piss off vince by getting his way and getting his title shot. Then Roman says to Vince, all of those big grapefruits have shriveled up into nothing. Or something like that, he said. They've shriveled up into nothing. Vince looks angry, then Roman says, or something like, how about giving me, how about fighting me now, old man, or challenging Vince to fight and then Vince starts taking his jacket off like he's going to fight Roman. R Vince would absolutely get destroyed if he fought Roman. But anyways, and then Roman even said, you're a 70-year-old man and you're out of touch. You don't know what's going on or something like that. That was pretty funny also. Because Roman was speaking the truth there. Even though I don't really think Vince is out of it. If he really was out of it, Obviously, you'd be taken out of power from the WWE if his brain could not function anymore. So then, Roman, somehow, by putting Vince down and challenging him, Vince says, you got your title shot tonight, but if you lose to Sheamus, you're fired. He gets up in Roman's face and says, you're fired if he loses to Sheamus. And then Vince kicks Roman right in the nuts. And Roman falls down on his knees. That was pretty funny. And then Vince goes up on the stage and puts his arm around Sheamus. And they're hugging each other like they're two lovers. And then they go to commercial. And then what happened next was... Uh, Rusev, or Ryback, and Jack Swagger. Which I really dislike Ryback. Every time I see him now... He just gets more and more on my nerves, and I don't like the guy. I just I dislike him. When I see him, I just, something inside of me gets angry for him being on TV. It's not his fault, but whatever. So Ryback and Swagger team up. This was a stupid, boring tag match. Team up to take on Rusev and Alberto Del Rio, the League of Nations. Rusev and... Del Rio win. The tag match was very lame, very boring. Should have been on SmackDown. Up next, we had Neville taking on uh, Tyler Breeze. 
Neville wins. Finally, Neville gets a freaking win on Monday Night Raw. And The Miz was at ringside for Neville, I guess. Trying to change Neville into an entertaining character and make him a movie star. Crap like that. Or trying to recruit Neville to get him in movies or whatever. I guess Miz, you could say, is trying to bring Neville over to the dark side. Into the Hollywood uh, B-movie DVD releases. Because I guess the Miz wants to get Neville in movies that are only released on DVDs. And then after they're released on DVDs, a month later, Neville could have his movies played on the USA Network. That would be pretty fun, wouldn't it? I'm sure Neville would be happy with that career choice. I doubt it. I wouldn't. Anyways, Neville wins. Pretty good, decent match. But it wasn't that long. Both of the, those guys, Neville and Breeze, were great when they were in NXT. But on the main roster, they've been held back a little bit. And they've just... They can't really be themselves, and they can't show their real talents because they don't get, like, a match that lasts over 10 minutes. They don't really get much time to show their talents. So, then the match ends, Neville wins. Backstage segment, which was boring as hell, comes back where The Miz is in a segment with Neville trying to lure him into joining him and going to Hollywood or becoming a Miz keeps telling Neville I'll make you a movie star nobody cares and Neville anyways I wouldn't want to see Neville even in a movie because it'd probably be boring the guy is not really an actor and not much of a great talker or that entertaining but in the ring he's great So now, I don't know why they're doing this with The Miz trying to convert Neville into being a Hollywood actor like like The Miz, Miz's gimmick. Nobody else should really be The Miz or try to act like him. Last year we had Miz Dow being with The Miz. That worked because of Miz Dow. Being so damn entertaining, he got that over. He got Damien Mizdow, he actually got it over because Miz Damien Sandow actually has a lot of talent. I don't know why they're trying to make Neville like Mizdow 2.0, but it's really stupid and I hope it ends soon. It needs to end because it's really boring and stupid. So up next was Team ECW taking on the Wyatt family. This was an Extreme Rules match. I was happy it was announced as an Extreme Rules match because I like those type of matches. They're entertaining. They make the show a lot funner to watch. So Team ECW loses to the White family. This was a pretty awesome match. Tommy Dreamer is on the stage. Had Luke Harper... I believe in a death, Valley Driver took him off the stage. They went through two tables. Braun picked up Tommy Dreamer, ram, rammed him through the guardrail. From the crowd, he ran Tommy through the guardrail. That was pretty awesome. The Dudleys, outside of the ring, getting hit with Singapore canes. And then Bubba took the cane, got in the ring, started trying to beat Luke Harper with it. But Luke Harper looked pretty damn unstoppable in this match. Luke Harper just fought off Devon and Bubba Ray. And got up and kicked Bubba right in the face. Set up a table. And then Luke Harper was going to put, uh, I think, Devon through the table. And then Devon... Threw him up against the ropes. Picked him up for 3D. Bubba was on the other side of the table. Luke Harper gets 3D. Dudley Death dropped through the table. That was pretty awesome. And then uh, Eric Rowan gets in the ring. and or After 3D, Devon covers Luke Harper. 1, 2. Devon gets pulled out of the ring by Bray Wyatt and hit with Sister Abigail. And then Eric Rowan gets in the ring and does a spinning spinning wheel kick to Bubba Ray, I think. Knocks him out. And then gets sets up a table. 
Eric Rowan puts a rhino on the table, goes up to the top rope, does a big splash, crashing through rhino through the table. One, two, three, the Wyatt family wins a Extreme Rules match. It was a very entertaining match. It was very good and a very good match for being on Monday Night Raw. We don't get to see many good matches on Raw anymore because they've been booking the show like absolutely shit. But tonight the Extreme Rules match was really good and I'm glad it was on Raw. Same thing about Vince. Announcing the WWE World Heavyweight Championship match that it was going to be the main event of Raw. I was happy to hear that because Raw and the main events and the final segments of Raw recently have been shit and pretty lame. So anytime you can get a WWE World Heavyweight Championship match to end a Raw is a damn good thing. So the Wyatts win two nights in a row. The Wyatts defeat Team ECW. So basically Team ECW is just put in to face the Wyatts to job and get them over I guess. Nothing's wrong with that. I don't got any issues with that, but I feel a little bit bad for Dudley's and Tommy Dreamer and Rhino that they lose two nights in a row to the Wyatts. But whatever. It's getting the Wyatts over more and more as looking as a strong, dominant family. So next was, after the Extreme Rules match, it was... <clears throat> the New Day coming out. The New Day comes out, gets a great reaction. A lot of people chanting New Day sucks with their music. Some chanting New Day rocks, even though a lot of the fans are entertained by the New Day. So the New Day comes out, cuts a promo, and basically says, Come out here, Usos. We got nothing but respect for you. We're beat up. We're not going to attack you. We got our street clothes on. So the Usos come out, get in the ring. And then New Day was actually like congratulating the Usos and thanking them for the being in the triple threat ladder match at TLC. And the New Day was really putting over the ladder match. They were putting over, putting over the Usos and the Lucha Dragons. And then the New Day says, come on out here. Big E says, come out here. Come out here, Luchas. So then the Lucha Dragons come out. They get a good reaction and like a standing ovation because that was a hell of a three-way ladder match. It was one of the best I've seen in many, many, many years. It was damn entertaining and pretty damn good. So the Lucha Dragons come out and then the Usos and Lucha Dragons end up leaving the ring and then the New Day turns on them and starts saying we're the greatest... And we were the best, or something like that, putting down the Usos and the Lucha Dragons after they were just nice to them and said kind words to them. Then they turned heel on them again. That was pretty damn funny, and I enjoyed that. And then the Usos and Lucha Dragons, I believe, came back in the ring and I think attacked the New Day. I don't really remember. Or they went to a commercial next, something like that. But when the New Day started talking about talking bad and putting down the Usos and Lucha Dragons, they started coming back to the ring. I do know that. Up next, I just I can't remember every single little thing that happened because most of Raw, like the entire show almost, I was on Twitter. So I wasn't paying all the way attention to Raw, so I just wrote down some notes about what happened on the show. Up next was the final match before the main event. It was a Divas match. The first time we saw the Divas tonight. It was in Hour 3. It was a team of Becky Lynch and Charlotte teaming up to take on Brie Bella and Alicia Fox. Again, Team Bella. Team Bella and Team Bad need to just go away and break up. They need to break them up because it's just lame as hell. Putting Team Bella and Team Bad in tag matches every single month or week. It's enough already. And uh, Sasha really needs to get away from Team Bad because she's way too talent talented to be stuck in a goddamn fucking group. 
Sasha needs to be free and be herself and be alone and be a single star. Because she is a star. She's a hell of a talent, is Sasha Banks. I'm a big fan of hers. And I'm a big fan of Becky also, but um, I probably see WWE adding Becky Lynch to a Divas title match at the Royal Rumble, probably with Paige and maybe someone else. But I'm a big fan of all the, I'm a big fan of Charlotte, Becky, Sasha, Paige, Natty, because they can all wrestle and all work. Even Alicia Fox is a great worker. Not as good as Charlotte and Becky and Sasha, but Alicia Fox is still pretty good, and even Brie Bella is decent. I mean, when I watch Brie Bella matches and I've seen them, I don't get angry thinking she sucks and she doesn't belong in the ring like I feel when I see Eva Marie because Eva Marie does not belong in the ring and she does suck. Brie Bella's way better than Eva Marie. So, Becky Lynch, Charlotte, I believe, I, they do get the victory, I remember. This, Ric Flair pulled Alicia Fox's leg and tripped her from the outside of the ring. Becky Lynch, I don't not think knew this, but then she locked in her arm bar, I think, and the match was over. Becky, Charlotte win. Up next was the main event. Before the main event, we had a stupid backstage segment with Titus O'Neil. I'm not saying Titus is stupid. I'm a fan of his. But he was cutting some promo. Um, and cutting a promo on WWE about WWEshop.com that you can get 25% off. Woo! Nobody really cares. I mean, unless you're going to buy something there tonight. I guess then you should care. And I understand why that Titus cut a promo about WWEshop.com 25% off because Christmas is next week. And I'm sure WWE Shop would love to get more business on their website before Christmas. So that's probably why they did it. Did that promo on Raw. And I'm sure they'll probably get a lot of business from fans tonight and this week and next week before Christmas ordering gifts for their relatives and girlfriends and boyfriends. So, after Titus O'Neil does that promo about WWEshop.com, I'm giving them a promo right now because I've said their name like four times. So I guess if you have money and you want to buy someone, you want to buy a fan a gift, Go to www.shop.com. Maybe you'll find something for somebody that's in your life that they'll enjoy. So now was the main event. Sheamus defending against Roman Reigns. This was it was decent. It was pretty good last night. Their TLC match was better, but I only say that because they had ladders and chairs and tables could be used. Tonight was just a one-on-one -on -one match, but Vince tried to screw Roman. Vince pulled the referee out under under the ropes out of the ring to try to screw Roman. The ref was about to count three and then Vince pulled his leg, pulled him out of the ring. Vince wouldn't allow it. Roman knocks out Vince, I believe with a Superman punch. Vince was knocked out, I think, laying on the ring apron. Knocked out cold. That was pretty funny to see. That was pretty damn good to do that. In the main event, have Vince get knocked out by Roman. So, maybe next week or in the future, Vince will try to be getting revenge on Roman for doing that to him. And after Vince, I believe, got knocked out, then you had Rusev come out and the League of Nations come out. I just saw Rusev. I don't know where Del Rio and Baird were. Maybe they were there also. But I didn't watch the entire match because I was going back and forth from Twitter to watching Raw. But I did see the end. Anyways, stupid Sheamus hits a bro kick. And I thought Roman is not going to kick out of this. But I thought I really he better kick out or he'll be fired in WWE isn't. That make no sense for WWE to fire Roman Reigns. The guy's your top. 
I mean, the guy's basically the top baby face, and WWE's trying to have Roman Reigns be the top baby face and replace John Cena because Cena's going to have to be replaced. You're going to have to have a guy to replace Cena in two or three years, or four or five years. <coughs> because I don't see Cena working full time anymore in five years. I doubt he will be, and he shouldn't be. But because he's been on top long enough. So Roman will probably be the guy to replace Cena. Is the top merchandise seller, the top babyface, whatever. Vince's next guy, the company's next guy, whatever. I got no problem with Roman Reigns. Booking him against Sheamus is a great way to get him. To have the fans cheer him because a lot of fans do not like Sheamus. So booking Roman against Sheamus and having Roman show great heart and great fight was the right decision. Booking him against Sheamus was the right call. Having him win the title tonight on a Raw was the right decision. It was exciting. It was unexpected, but not really because we all knew Roman was not going to be fired. At least I knew he wasn't going to be fired. So I guess it wasn't that unexpected, but it was still great to see a WWE World Heavyweight Championship title change. We finally got to see a WWE World Heavyweight Championship title change on Monday Night Raw. It's about damn time. I've been watching Raw since, like, full-time, basically full-time since 1998. I've been watching Raw because I got cable for full time in 98. I don't have cable anymore, but I still watch Raw. I, I have a uh, direct TV. Anyways, I started watching Raw full time in 98. Back then, you had a lot of title changes on Raw in 98 and 99. Even 2000 had a few, I think. 2001, you had Stone Cold defeat Kurt Angle on a Raw to win the title back, I think. So, I mean, having a WWE title change on a Monday Night Raw is very, very rare. It is not done anymore. It hasn't been done probably for years and years and years. The last one I can think of is when uh, The Miz defeated Randy Orton. That's the last title change on Raw I can think of off the top of my head. Maybe there was another one after that, but I don't remember it. So, Roman wins the title. I was very happy about that because it's awesome. I think it's great that the title's off of the rooster. Thank God it's off of him because I thought the guy was a god-awful champion. And um, maybe WWE didn't want him to have a long title run. I don't know, but I'm just guessing that w Vince had Roman Reigns win the title on Raw to get the ratings up. That's probably why they did it. Because Raw and their ratings have been falling and dropping. The highest ratings of Raw is the first hour. Usually when the first hour starts is when they get the highest ratings. And hour two the ratings are still decent but they go down. Hour three the ratings have been dropping month after month. So Having Roman win the title is probably out of a little bit of panic mode on WWE's part because of the ratings being low. So they would have had Roman win the title probably to pop and boost the ratings. Whatever, I don't care. I don't care what reason why they gave Roman the title tonight on Raw. I'm just happy it's off of Sheamus. Very happy it's off of him. I said Sheamus should retain at TLC, and he did. I did not think we tonight. I did not think we were gonna get a Sheamus Reigns title rematch. I didn't think we were gonna get a title change on Raw. I mean, who would who could think of that 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 would happen unless you thought about how the ratings are suffering and WWE is gonna do a title change? Well. When Vince said, Roman, if you don't win, you're fired. I'm sure every fan knew that Roman was going to end up winning it. 
and I'm glad he did it. I said it on Twitter. Tonight was Roman's night. It's his time to get the title. He got it. Hopefully the guy improves and has a long, successful run as WWE Champion. I think Roman will be a success as Champion. The guy just needs a couple months as Champion and needs a couple of title defenses. And I'm sure he'll improve. Even though he's still pretty bad on the mic. He's not got awful, but he's still not that good. Uh, cutting promos and like talking with just uh, reading off of scripted promos that are probably written for him. He should stop that and not read uh, the writer's scripted promos and not listen to some stupid agents like Road Dog if he's the one that came up with tater tots and told Roman to say that. Well, Roman shouldn't listen to any agents and shouldn't be listening to other people's words that are telling him what to say and then he listens to them and says their words he should say his own words and come up with his own damn promos because I don't think Roman Reigns is that stupid where he couldn't come up with his own promos I'm sure the guy could if he just thought about what he was going to say for his promo before he went out there he would do okay Instead of being written a promo and written bullet points on what to say. He doesn't do good with taking a scripted promo. I don't think that's the way to book Roman Reigns and to get him over. Just let the guy say his own words and come up with his own promos. So Roman, I'm happy. Final thoughts. I'm happy that Roman Reigns is the new champ. I'm glad they took it off of Sheamus. I'm not a fan of Sheamus. I'm glad they took it off of him. That's awesome. If I grade, give Raw a grade tonight, it was pretty entertaining from hour one to the end. It was pretty damn good. It was probably the best Raw since the Raw after SummerSlam, in my opinion. So if I grade it, I give a Raw tonight a I'd give it a, a B. I'd say it was a B or B plus because you had a WWE World Heavyweight Championship title change in the beginning of Raw where Stephanie was smacking around Roman. That was pretty good. And then Vince coming out on Raw. That was unexpected. That was pretty good to see. Even though Vince is an old guy, it still was good to see him on Raw. And to have Vince appear on Raw was still entertaining. At least I was entertained by hearing Vince cut a promo and talk to Roman Reigns. I was entertained by that. Maybe there's something wrong with me. I don't know, but I was entertained by seeing Vince McMahon back on TV. So this ends my Raw review for Raw Philadelphia. Hope you all enjoy my Raw review. Follow me on Twitter at TNAWWEGUY. And my second account is at NXT WWE Guy. Hope you enjoyed my Raw review for Raw Philly. Bye for now, everybody. Have a good week.